Well, 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 if it isn't the old Miata, we're back at it again, this time with some performance parts for it, not maintenance. We scored pretty big over Christmas and my birthday. We got, uh, we got, we got Fly Miata Stage 1 Happy Meal Kit, which is a new clutch that holds up to 318 foot-pounds of torque. Now you might be asking yourself, this thing's only pushing like 90 foot-pounds of torque, and I'm like, yeah, that's maybe what it's doing right now, but who knows? Maybe in the future, put a little turbski on there, and it's gonna be pushing like 250. So we're upgrading the clutch before we ruin the, the original one. And it also comes with a lightweight flywheel, so we're going from like 17 pounds to 10 pounds. It's gonna rev, it's gonna be super rev happy. It's supposed to have really easy uh, stock feel, so it's not gonna be too heavy, easy daily driver. And with that, since we're pulling the transmission out, we're, uh, we're gonna replace the rear main seal, so I picked up Fell Pro rear main seal off of Amazon, link in description. And of course, when you're dropping the transmission, you also gotta drop the fluid. So we got some unicorn tears here. This is what every Miata enthusiast recommends in your transmission, the Ford Motocraft synthetic. Link in the description as well. So first things first, before you do anything, you wanna disconnect the battery. And that's in the trunk, so we'll do that quick. We disconnected the battery, now we're underneath the car, we gotta drain the transmission fluid. But first you wanna make sure that you can get the fill plug loosened before you drain it, because you wanna be able to fill it. Fill is right on the side here, so we're just gonna, we're not gonna undo it all the way, we just wanna make sure that we can get it off. And we've actually drained this recently, so that was super easy. We're just gonna tighten that back up and come over to this big plug underneath and smash things. I think this is like a 21 or a 22 or something, but we're just using an adjustable wrench, as you can see, and really, really struggling. Remembering the plug. Oh, every time. <laughs> Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> Transmission fluid stinks. So once this is done, we'll take the speedometer cable off, the slave cylinder off, both of which we've already done before. So far, nothing new for us today, this evening. So now that we drained the transmission fluid, we're gonna take the speedometer cable off. That guy's right in the back of the transmission. Another adjustable wrench job right there. Pop that guy out. Set it aside. We've got a little thing over here. Well, maybe we'll just leave that clipped in. Set that aside like that. Looks nice. Then we need to undo the slave cylinder, which the top bolt is finger tight. So good job on me last time I put that on. It's on the front of the transmission right in front of here. Now once you get this off, you wanna make sure that no one presses the clutch. So Dan, I know you like to go sit in the driver's seat and make pew pew noises like you're shifting through some gears, but we're not doing that today. Okay, there's one bolt. That one wasn't finger tight, which is good. I'm glad somebody has hope. Bottom bolt. Pull that forward. Get a little nipple out of there. Free the nipple. Free the nipple. Just set that slave off to the side. Dude, I don't even know what time of day it is. separates on that side. Right. But now how does this guy come out of here? Oh, it's just one of those pincher guys. That's the part that goes to the O2 sensor. So we got that connector undid. I tried to unsnake the, the O2 wiring out from behind there. It looks like it's basically free. We've got this O2 socket that can fit the wire through. So you can see our plug is now down here with us. Undo the O2. Hello and welcome 
Back to hard way learning. We ran into a few snags. You, you have to get sort of the midsection of the exhaust off according to the Car Passion channel. What up, Greg, if you're watching? I doubt it. We, we got some cutting tools. We're gonna try to get some rusted bolts off on the center. We've got the manifold basically unbolted. We're gonna take the manifold and the second section of exhaust piping out. Give us more access to the transmission bolts and then we'll move on from there. One other thing that I forgot to do was we need to undo the, the center console so that when we pull the transmission down, it doesn't tear our leather boot in the middle. Just a quick rundown of where the screws are for the center console. There's one here, one on the opposing side, one underneath the cup holder, and two. Oh, would you look at that? Hardway learning spam cards. Two in here underneath coins. Oh yes, and then there is some harnesses right here. So the next thing you want to do is uh, get the this like boot cover off. 10 millimeter bolts right here. Down there. We actually replaced this boot and the bushing, the shifter bushing in a different video. Check out that link that pops up in the top, top right corner. So to get this guy off, cause this plastic piece makes it kind of difficult. Just put a little WD-40 in there. So. We got it off. Obviously, the camera was not rolling, which is an epic fail, but pried this to get extra, you know, to make sure to get some WD-40 in between the, the rubber and the shaft. Wedged it up, kind of tried walking it from front lip as far as I could, the back lip, front lip, and then kind of walked it off, and then eventually it pulls off so hard you almost smack yourself in the face. So be careful with that. I believe we are done up top. The transmission can now drop through here without ripping out our boot and our center console. All right, angle grinders can be very dangerous. So we got gloves, eye protection, and hearing protection. And hopefully I don't cut my arm off or this doesn't. This exhaust should be pretty stable once I get, well, shit. Yeah, I think it'll be okay. Now I'm gonna let that cool off. Yep. So that's gonna be hot to trot. Sick. So, we cut that, that stubborn bolt, undid this middle hanger so that we can get at this to undo the uh, O2 sensor. I'll probably smash my hand. Plug on All the right. plug for you. The, uh, the O2 sensor was really stuck onto the exhaust. So what I did was, you come behind the driver's side back here. Yeah. Undo these two snaps here. They're just the plastic fastener things. You pull back the carpet. Underneath here is where that O2 sensor is. And then you undo this bolt, slide this rail forward, um, and just push the rubber seal that is connected to, is connected to the O2 sensor. And now we should be able to drop the rest of the exhaust. Undo that hanger, undo that hanger. I might pull it through, I guess. Before I forget how we did this, I just want to go over, there was a bolt holding the, the downpipe sort of-esque thing. This clamp piece, that guy. There was a bolt coming through there, 12 millimeter. Used a box end wrench on that side because the nut on the bracket is actually welded. So, loosen that bolt. Now the manifold is free. We're struggling to get the O2 sensor off, but now that the manifold is free, we're hoping we can get at that through the wheel well. Another update. We can't seem to get a good enough angle with the O2 sensor tool, so I have a wide band anyways that I want to install, so we might be cutting the back of the O2 sensor so that we can slip a socket over it and just impacting the O2 sensor off of there and then replacing it with the wide band. And then, well, we'll get it off and then that'll allow us hopefully to pull the manifold out with the secondary pipe. 
so we can access the rest of the transmission bolts. We still have to do the PPF and the drive shaft. The more we struggle, the less we film. We, uh, we snugged up the manifold so that we could cut the, we were just cut the O2 off so that we can fit a socket on it. We use this guy to cut through it. Hasta la vista, baby. So nothing should be impeding our path of removing this manifold. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, sweet baby. Let's start it. Oh my God. On the drive shaft, once you get the exhaust out of the way, you can come in here. There's four 14 millimeter bolts. To loosen them, you access the ones that are accessible while the e-brake is on. And then to rotate the drive shaft, you, ha you disengage the e-brake and expose the two others that you want. All right, so we have all the nuts and the lock watches off, so I'm pulling the bolts. Here's the last one here. E-brake is off so we can rotate it. Pull this forward, and then this puppy just slides right out, and we can set it aside. Now we are ready to tackle the PPF, which will take these three 18 millimeter bolts off. They're super long. Super long, I didn't lie. Hopefully the transmission doesn't dump on me. It shouldn't, because it's still connected to the engine. That guy is short. And then we will do those two. Oh, that was really hard on my ears. So we can leave it for there, right for now. So this, we're on the passenger side. Uh this harness needs to come undone from the transmission. Um, and we also disconnected those switches, electrical switches with these guys um, from the top. There's the wires, they wrap around the top, but we're gonna get this harness. It's a 10 millimeter. Uh, we already got the slave, which is right here, two 12 millimeter bolts. And then from then on, we should be ready to start doing the bolts. We're gonna need a really long extension to get the top trans bolts. Push that up out of the way, put the bolt back in just so we don't lose it. Hardway learning team secret. And we'll be back at you when we're doing the trans bolts. So the starter has two bolts on top. This is the setup I was using, or I guess it's called the universal with 12 millimeter for those two bolts. And then there's a nut in a bolt that's a 14 millimeter. And that guy, the lowest one on the starter. And it's a nut on this side and a bolt on the other side, so I've got a, a wrench on the other side holding that boy. Just crack a doodle do. Ah! You don't need any fancy tools, no nothing. You just need a little bit of stupidity. We've got plenty of stupidity. I've got enough for the both of us. Hit the subscribe button and the bell button. Because we do stupid stuff all the time. I want you to be well notified when you do stupid stuff. <clears throat> Set our starter bolts aside. Okay, so I think all the tough ones are done on this side. All right, so uh, we're looking for a little bit of leverage. We bought this one inch in diameter pipe. We'll lop it off, it'll give us some leverage to bust those nuts. So this is cheaper than buying a fry bar. And we have the option to like make several different lengths and still have a ratcheting feature. And then uh, hopefully we'll have the transmission off in no time. All right, first things first, safety. Messing around with an angle grinder. Jump around on you, slip out of your hand, cut your fingers. Eye, eye protection as well. Hey, what up? We've got a, a 12 inch extension on a six and a six maybe. You know, a universal on the end there for this top left, so top driver side. Transmission bolt. That cracked her off. Took a little bit of effort. We uh, busted a nut. We, we got convincer bar here. 
Dan's ingenious idea to go buy some pipe. So we laid pipe, we cut it down to the length that would give us enough room down here, and we busted a nut all over. The so to get the uh, pa passenger side top right bolt of the transmission, I just added a three inch extension blade pipe on here. Still got the universal on the end. It's another 18 millimeter bolt. Busted a move on that puppy, and we are home free. Those are the only difficult bolts left access wise. The other ones I'm sure we'll still need a lot of additional convincer bar action, but I think this transmission will be out in the next 30 minutes. Two hours later. You don't, don't give us a timeline. I mean, through the magic of editing, we could make it any amount of time, but. I've got an 18 just above the uh, throw out, like the slave. An 18 that has a, a nut on the other end. Or a bolt, I guess. So I snuck this box end on there and just let it lean up against the subframe. And I've got no more universal, but I've just got my 12 inch extension. I used a break, my uh, handy dandy pipe to break it loose and now we're just getting her off. Now we've just got the lower four or lower three, I guess. That must have been the bracket for the slave coil that I no longer use. Keep note, this orientation, note to self, wasn't like that. This guy and this guy, you just need a 12 inch, no universal. Still need a breaker bar. I don't know, what is this, like 16 inch? Cut the fit. Get 10 feet of pipe. Use however oh, much you need. Cause now we can make super long ones if we want, super short ones if we want. We can make it the same length as this. Wouldn't benefit at all, but you can do it. Okay, last bolt here, ideally. Supporting the base with my knee. Um, this is the furthest I've ever taken a car apart. I've got the manifold out. I've got the PPF off. I've got... You might have to loosen the back bolt to the PPF. Okay, PPF, back of the car. I'm originally had taken off the front bolt. I was not allowing anything to pivot here because I think this insert is fitting into the bracket it's mounting into. So we put the bolt back in the front and pulled the back one out. Now the whole thing will pivot really easy. Oh, now I gotta get that spline shaft off. Uh, maybe get the jack on the far end of the, if we can. Blood, sweat, and tears. Grease. Transmissions are sharp. Be careful on the bell housing. We'll show you what we did differently. <laughs> in a bit. In a, in a little bit. I think we're gonna get... Okay, so we are, we got the transmission off. One thing to note, this crossbar that's right here, we took that off so it was easier to just slip back a little bit and come down. I don't know how Greg, shout out to Greg on the Car Passion channel for being able to do this on his own. Cause I really don't know how he did it. He's a wizard. So one trick that Greg recommends, really people should just subscribe to the Car Passion channel on YouTube. He's also got an Instagram. I basically watched his video several times to figure out how to get this far. So shout out to Greg, smart dude, did it on jack stands. But his little trick here is put one of these transmission bolts back in and put a pry bar into the flywheel so that when you try to loosen these bolts, it doesn't spin. I'm sure that's like some gangster ass trick that a lot of people know, but if you didn't know, like me, it was nice of him to tell us. And then if you're, if you're planning on reusing the pressure plate, you wanna, you wanna loosen this kind of like strategically. Uh, we actually have, we're doing the flying Miata Happy Meal kit, so this whole thing gets replaced, including the throw up bearing. So, it doesn't really matter what we're doing here. I really need to pull my, like, card foot further back. So we're gonna pressure plate, get that off. We'll touch base in a little bit. Got the pressure plate and the clutch off. So the flywheel bolts are 19 millimeters, and we're gonna impact those off. We got the flywheel off, and here's our rear main seal. And replace that may as well since you're already in here and it takes so much effort and this really is very common to leak i'm kind of interested in what's going on here there's like i don't know it feels like is this leaking is the roommate seal leaking i don't know uh really important you don't want to scratch this surface along the crankshaft because uh it'll cause it to leak and like no matter what you do it's gonna leak always and you don't want to have to replace that so you want to be really careful in pulling this uh, I'm just gonna try to dig into it, I guess, and not touch any of the metal bits. To get the seal off, I took a hammer and this 
sort of like coarse threaded screw, tapped the screw into the seal and then screwed it in a little bit. And I came in like this and pried the seal off carefully, cleaned it out. And now we are ready to put our new seal on. And one thing that I'd really like to try is this guy. I was hoping it would be just big enough to cover this outer lip so that I couldn't push the seal on too far because I believe you want to be flush with this outer lip. We'll get a little bit of oil on here and then tap it with a hammer. Come around it in a circle. kidding me oh my god uh we've got our throw up bearing majigger here uh i took this gasket off that back in here to get this guy off it holds the throw up bearing through here you have to separate this little spring clip and then uh, it lets it come off this ball but I'm gonna clean that and put some fresh grease on there. Grab some grease, grease up this guy a little bit. And then grab our new throw out bearing. And grease up this. Just pop that guy right through there. Get our boot on and that not come off anymore. The flywheel comes kind of oiled up to prevent corrosion, so I sprayed it with brake press cleaner and wiped it down. You'll want to do that again once you mount it, but we'll touch base on that once we're back in there. We want to put our pilot bearing into the flywheel, so I'm going to put a little bit of grease around the outside to help it seat a little easier. Try to get it as flat as possible. And you want to find something that's slightly bigger than the uh, diameter of it so that you're pushing down on the outer seat of the bearing. And we'll just try to tap it in. That looks pretty good. So now our flywheel is ready to be mounted up. Now to put the flywheel back in. The bolt ready to hold it in place. And that is a 19 millimeter. We'll use the same trick to tighten this uh, star pattern and then pry bar with a bolt in place. All right, so we got blue Loctite on the flywheel bolts. Uh, torque spec is 75 foot-pounds about. You don't want to over-tighten it because you could crack the, uh, the crank. We got our pry bar over here, hashtag Greg at the car, passion channels, little hack to hold the flywheel in place while you're trying to tighten it. So, we'll torque these in a star pattern. That's not going to work. I need something. Now I need the bolt over here. <laughs> Okay. You want to clean off the friction surfaces, not the actual clutch itself, but the uh, flywheel friction surface and the pressure plate friction surface to make sure there's no oil residue or grease on there. It's going to make break-in a lot better because it won't slip and won't overheat and cause hot spots. I'm going to do the same thing with the pressure plate. The clutch disc itself has a right and a wrong side basically and the side that sticks protrudes more the side closer to me goes towards the pressure plate you want to make sure you don't touch or get oils on the friction pieces i'm gonna to want to fly a real bolt ready so there should be some dowels that line up with the pressure plate in the meantime, I'm going to place one of our Okay You always want to make sure this moves freely as you tighten this and Everyone should follow our good buddy Greg at the car passion channel because he recommends the bolt pattern which is Tighten one, skip one, skip one, 
skip two, skip one, skip one, skip two, and you keep doing that. So it'd be here. Well, let's figure out where our... Shit, did I not line this up right? We do our bolt pattern. from here you're gonna have to get your knee on the PPF to move it out of the way or something Stop moving. You get. okay I'm gonna have to move let's creep forward yeah okay okay the shifter is into like the center turret so that's good um, okay, keep coming up wait you're barely on the fuck you're barely on the jack anymore. Mm -hmm. So you're shifting. Um, I think we're resting on the pressure plate. Can we back up with that? Or is there a oh yeah, I gotta go down. Okay, come down a little bit. Oh, I think we're... Your, the shifter's out of the center. Okay. It's gotta go forward about there. Okay, can I go up more? I just... I have no idea where it's supposed to be. I guess try up. Oh. Okay. We're we're pretty close to home here. Oh, yep, there's it falling off. You're, you need to come forward just to touch on your jack, okay. Oh. Oh! Wait. Come forward. Wait forward. No 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 no. Leg cramping. Um, I can't go up any higher. Ooh. Can you come forward? Oh yeah, that's it. Okay, 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 okay. Where's the bolt? I need a bolt. What did you... I told you to put them where you... Yeah, no, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> if this is in, this was, I think, lucky? No, we're just fucking good. Oh my god, I'm sweating so much. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing new. I'm okay holding this, I guess. I just want to see how much... Oh, well, there's a pretty significant lip right there that we're getting. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, my finger. Okay, okay. Okay, now we are okay. Should we? So, uh, obviously we got the transmission bolted up. We started reconnecting all the connectors, the speedometer cable, torqued down the bell housing to uh, believe 60 65 foot pounds the power plant frame we needed to jack it up we pushed right here and what you need to do is put preferably a straight edge across between the two frame rails and measure in between these two bolts from the bottom of the power plant frame to the top of this edge should be between 2.36 inches and like 2.83 or something it's in metric so you got to make sure that's aligned so that your drive shaft isn't stressed in a weird angle from there start bolting everything back together put your torque all your ppf bell housing starter bolts get the sleigh back on and then get your exhaust back on and you should be pretty much good to go that would spend 500 miles of easy driving before you really reef on it you want to make sure that clutch is broken and good and with that thank you for watching and we'll tune in next time